Hello there and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to kick off a series and this series is going to be about Podman. And for the demonstrations, we are going to use a CentOS 10 machine. So Podman is basically an open source container tool and it is developed by Red Hat and it's natively used in their uh, OpenShift clusters and uh, it is basically a gateway to Kubernetes in a sense that Podman is not only able to manage containers but it is able to manage pods and this is going to be the main goal of this video series to show you how you can install it and use it. So on a CentOS machine we would like to use the yum install Podman and once the installation is complete, we basically don't have anything else to do. And uh, uh, the idea behind Podman is to provide rootful and rootless containers. And one of the main differences between rootful and rootless containers is from the network perspective. If you are using rootful containers, then you will receive an IP address for your containers and pods. If you are using rootless, then you will be, you will not be uh, using basically IP addresses. You will not be provided with IP addresses. And it has a little bit of getting used to, although it is claimed to be basically a gateway to uh, or drop-in replacement for Docker. And if you are using a CentOS or Red Hat machine, you should uh, use the systemctl enable now cockpit service and cockpit hmm yum install cockpit oh it has to be installed okay so <coughs> by default it's not there for whatever reason, but I was playing with it on the ARM based CentOS, and on that I didn't, I don't remember that I have installed it. Anyway, so if you install Cockpit, you can enable the Podman service, and once you enabled Podman service and you disabled so stop dash dash now, firewall D, not stop disable. You are going to be provided with a GUI. And on the GUI, CentOS 9, 10, 1990, you should be able to connect SSDNL. Oh, why is it not working? Enable cockpit service on CentOS. So, ah, cockpit socket is the one that we have to enable, and after that, we are going to be able to log in to this web interface. And I'm going to use my own user to log in. And if you have Podman installed, and you have basically enabled administrative access. Uh, cockpit podman containers. What you can do is to basically uh, manage your containers. And let's see if we can use the yum install cockpit podman good let's restart the podman service and the cockpit socket system ctl restart and if you reload and log in then we have the podman containers and uh, by the end of this video, I'm going to get to it as well. So we have Podman installed and the very first demo should be a container that we start. 
So in order to start a container, we can drop back to our standard user. And here we have the podman command. And if we want to start a podman container, we can use podman run. We name the container basic httpd and the dt is going to be detached with tty and the port mapping is going to be 8080 to 80 and slash tcp and we will use the docker.io slash httpd or let's use nginx latest. And what Podman will do is to reach out to docker.io container registry and then start the container. And we can get a list of running containers by the Podman ps-a and if we are running it as a standard user, this container is not going to have an IP address, but if we are running it with sudo, and if I just issue podman ps-a, this list is going to be empty. So this is a user container. And if we want, we can use the podman exec it and specify the container ID, and we say bin and bash, and now we are inside of our containers on our container and technically with Docker, we would also use the Docker exec. If we want to stop a container, we can use the podman stop. Let's do this with dash a and the podman rm dash a. This will stop the Nginx container and remove it. So the podman ps-a is a list of containers. The podman images-a is going to be the list of images which were downloaded. And the podman containers-a uh, containers list is going to be give us, giving us a list of containers. And if I start back my container, it doesn't have to download the image, obviously. But what I want to do is to use the podman inspect. And the podman inspect is going to require an ID. And if we provide that ID, this is the information that we got from our container. And as you can see, we are just bound to the host IP on port 8080, but we do not have a network or the network address for this container. But since we are bound, we can use curl HTTP localhost 8080 with the dash i, and we can see that voila, there is a response from Nginx. And if we want, we can also podman container list this is going to give this information. We can get the logs from Podman. And this is the log from the Nginx container. And we also have the Podman top. And if we give it the image ID, we see that these are the running processes in our container. Now, if I re redo this Podman run command with sudo, and I adjust the name root httpd and adjust the port so we don't have any conflict. Let's see what is going to be the difference. One of the difference is that Podman stores container images on different location, whether you are using it as a standard user or uh, another user, the root user. And every container uh, Podman related configuration file is going to be in here under the Etsy containers. And now if I use Podman ps-a with sudo, and I can see that this is the root container. And if I omit the sudo, this is the basic httpd container. So now if I use sudo podman inspect, with the container ID, inspect and scroll up. 
I should be able to find the IP address and this is going to be the IP address for my container. And now in the cockpit, if I go back and reload it, you can see that the basic HTTPD container is now running. And if I want, I can create another container. For now, I would like to neglect the create pod section. So let's just create a container and let's call this uh, user pi. And I want to run as the reaper pi user and the docker.io slash reaper pi and slash red ingress. And I want to use the AMD 64 image. And if we wrote a right image, it is going to populate <coughs> basically the appropriate value. And this image starts by default. So I don't really want to create any new, uh, new uh, command to execute in this image. I can assign the memory limit for this. We can have port mapping and this port mapping is going to go with the host port uh, 8082 and the container port 8080. And I don't want to provide any kind of health check. I just want to go ahead and run it. And once the image is downloaded, we can see that now the user P is running. This means that if I visit the HTTP CentOS 10 8082 and provide the right context route, I will get the response from the container. And I think it's a, it's a pretty cool way to interact with your containers. If you want, you can also search for container images. So for example, podman search Ubuntu latest. And this is going to reach out to the Docker registry and search for the Ubuntu latest image. And if I want, I can use podman pull and specify Ubuntu latest. This is going to reach out to the podman pool, uh, to the Docker container registry. And now under the podman images, I can see the Nginx, the Python image, and the Ubuntu image as well. If I want, I can create new images with the podman tag. And I can say that I want to tag the Ubuntu latest as my Ubuntu and latest as my Ubuntu. And now I can see that there is a new image. Now, if I want to run this image, I would have to refer to the local slash my Ubuntu instead of the Docker IO name. And that's all I wanted to show you for now in this video. If you are interested in Podman, stay tuned for more. See you in the next one.